What is going on my fellow duelist dogs here, aka Ancient 95, bringing you guys another Yu-Gi-Oh! video. This is going to be a discussion. Um, I've had a lot of questions people asking me over the years and just, especially as of re uh, recent, you know, months, just because Konami constantly shells out a ton of product and people feel compelled to buy product um, and they need to buy product more frequently or just buy cards uh, on the secondary market more frequently to update their decks to pretty much, you know, tailor them to whatever the best deck is or whatever the most up-to-date cards are because it's very difficult to, to stay competitive in this game as everyone knows um, just because of the constant change in uh, cards and the constant power creep which means you're always going to be forced to get new stuff. Now with all that being said, there's a couple things that I wanted to kind of just lay out for you guys and tell you at least the things I would be, I guess, considering you're taking into account uh, if I'm trying to build up a collection or just trying to build up a uh, you know, I guess you could call it a collection, but a collection of cards that I'm going to be using to playing, uh, to, to, to be playing in uh, in tournaments or, or premier events, whether it be locals, uh, regionals, or just you know YCSs and nationals, etc. Uh, so, and, and there's about four things. I'm sure there's a ton more things you could I could talk about, but uh, the four things are networking, borrowing, um, the tournaments themselves, and then buying and selling. Um, and yes, I'm using a cheat sheet for once. I actually laid out a couple of the things that I'd be talking about. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, I'll kind of talk a little bit on the side about different things, but I'm going to cover these four things first, um, as far as how you should pretty much be, like, if, not necessarily starting from ground zero, but let's just say you have a little bit of funds invested in this game, you just have, like, m mediocre to decent stuff, and you just want to kind of take it up a notch, maybe go to that next tier one deck, or, or get that best deck, or get those next last few cards that you need to finish your deck to be competitive, and to maybe win those tournaments or consistently top your local tournaments or win those tournaments um, or even regionals or whatnot. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is networking. Networking is probably one of the most important things um, and in this day and age uh, with social networking, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, all, all these different mediums of communication, it's so easy to network and build friendships and, and, and build uh, relationships with people and I think that's one of the biggest things and th that obviously leads into everything else. I mean you can't get anywhere in this life without, uh, without having friends and Building, building those relationships because they're pretty much going to be the foundation for your entire experience in Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, and it's going to allow you to pretty much accomplish several different things. Um, number one, it's going to give you a bunch of people to buy, trade, and sell from, which is huge. I mean, that's one of your biggest things if you're trying to, if you're pretty much a connoisseur of Yu-Gi-Oh! cards and trying to build up your own stuff. So whether you're trying to just build a collection and you're a collector and you just like to buy, trade, and sell, or if you're actually just trying to get those high-end cards and nice cards so you can play with them because you need them for tournaments to do well. Um, because for the majority of the, you know, the majority of the time, for all, you know, intents and purposes, realistically, you're going to need good cards to do well, to perform well at these tournaments. You can't expect to go in with, like, uh, I don't know, a, a shitty fluffle deck and expect to just consistently top your, your locals or regionals or whatever tournament you're going to. It's just... It's just not practical, you know, like, it's just not, it's not feasible if people are using, you know, meta decks, competitive tier one, or even potentially tier two decks there. It's just, it's just not realistic, you know, like, you kind of, you kind of have to, you can't be in denial about that. You have to admit to yourself that, okay, I'm going to need better cards, I'm going to need better decks, and, you know, the skill may or may not be there, but the point is, I, I, first I need to acquire the things that would allow me to use that skill, whether I have it or not, to, you know, win those tournaments and top those tournaments. Um, so yeah, networking is very, very important. Um, I, I suggest, you know, go, adding yourself to a bunch of different Facebook groups, um, especially ones that involve a lot of buying, trading, and selling. Um, a lot of the higher end ones. I know there's certain ones you, some people can't get added to unless you just know the people in there. Um, there's ones that are just like extremely just high end Yu-Gi-Oh cards. We're talking like prize cards strictly, like pretty much just like prize cards only and like collector's items only. But you can add yourself to a lot of the just most generic uh, trading groups and whatnot and try and build some network, uh, some relationships there. Um, you know, from people. And then networking kind of goes in the next thing, is, which is borrowing. Uh, borrowing is one of the most popular things that you see, especially at a, at a very competitive level of Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, you guys probably see pro players or just good players in your area do this all the time. Um, I know I'm a, I'm a big uh, advocate of borrowing stuff, especially if you're someone that, that's very reliable like me. I'm personally, um, I borrow a ton of cards all the time. Um, and I'm very thankful for that, especially a lot of my friends that allow me to borrow cards whenever I need them. 
Um, I don't, like, I don't always have to borrow cards because I have, you know, I have a pretty substantial, like, sub collection myself or just cards that I would, you know, like to use. I don't really get, like, specific archetypes. I'll get archetypes if I like them. Um, but for the most part, I'll have just all the generic stuff that I need and I'll need, like, maybe an archetype card or two or a theme card here or there. Um, but for the most part, I borrow stuff. And if you're, if you're a reliable person, you're trustworthy and you have a lot of close relationships with friends and you're definitely not planning on screwing them over, um, you should definitely ask some of your friends to borrow stuff. And then, and honestly, like you, you can always, um, you can always work something out with your friends. Maybe they let you borrow a card, um, and then if you win something from the tournament, you give them like a cut of it, or you know, kind of like a loan. It, it, or, it works both ways. I mean, maybe if your friends need a card that you have, um, but you guys aren't really trading it or whatever, you just, you just let them use it for the tournament, or you let them use it for X, for, for whatever duration of time, and while they let you use something, while you start playing in tournaments and doing well because you have those better cards. Which is the next thing, which is tournaments. Tournaments are probably, like, I wouldn't say, they're, they're kind of like the most double-edged thing because tournaments can have, can, can be very cool, very fun, very competitive, but the problem is in Yu-Gi-Oh, tournaments aren't always the most profitable. Um, unfortunately, the prize support in this game is pretty shitty outside of uh, Ultra Reality Games Circuit Series um, because they actually have payouts where you can, you can use that stuff towards, that, that credit towards anything. Um, YCSs aren't exactly profitable, believe it or not, unless you're getting first place, which is only one person can get first place out of, you know, 1,600 plus people or a uh, thousand plus people. Um, and it's just not, it's not practical to assume that you're always going to win these tournaments or even top these tournaments just because of pure variance. Um, and just statistically, it's not, it's not going to happen that frequently or at all even. Um, especially if you're not, you, you don't have the skill and you don't have all those, you know, those good competitive cards to be playing in them. But the thing about tournaments, particularly local tournaments or smaller tournaments in your area, is if you have like de decent prize payout, um, maybe your locals do credit, maybe they do boxes, maybe they do something like that, um, being able to network and borrow cards and have access to these cards um, in the first place, or maybe just putting an investment into some cards, and then playing in your local tournaments and then consistently topping them because of that and getting better and still continuing to top them and maybe even win them, um, will allow you to build up things like credit um, we're just a prize pool like some places that don't do credit I know they'll give you boxes or they'll give you like half a box or people will split you know do all sorts of things um, Personally, I'm not a big uh, Big fan of doing the whole split thing. I think you should always go big or go home uh, That's just my motto. You should always just try to play it out unless it's just not worth it Like I know like some of the locals I go to like the finals There's no point in really playing it out because a split would pretty much be a difference of like two or three dollars There's just no point in that right? Um, but if you're playing for, for quote-unquote higher stakes um, you should definitely play it out because variance uh, can happen. You can win, you can lose. Um, you never know. Sometimes they give consolation prizes, but those aren't really that great. But nonetheless, tournaments are really big because you can pile up all this credit um, and all these like little mini prizes that you get over time. And for instance, with me, what I, I used to do, and I still sometimes do this. I don't really do this as frequently uh, anymore. Um, is that when I would, you know, I'd consistently top tournaments and win tournaments. What I would do is I would just pile up my credit. And then let's say I was planning on going to going to a big event or I needed some cash to go to a big event or I needed some cards or something along that nature. I just wanted some extra cash in my pocket for the day or week. What I would do is I would put all that credit into an item or a bunch of items that I know a locals had that I could resell. For instance, player's choice sleeves, white sleeves. Um, I There's a couple locals in my area. One of, one of my locals in my area about a year ago changed ownerships and I had a little over $400 in credit there built up um, over the course of like six or eight months. Um, and what I did was they, they forced people to burn all that credit um, before the ownership change, which I was like, all right, that's fine. So I burned all my credit on every single player's choice white sleeve they had, and then I burned it on every other player's choice sleeve they had, then I burned it on ultra pro sleeves, then I burned it on all the uh, monster binders that they had, and then I burned it on like random stuff that they had in their case, and then I pretty much just burned the rest on like drinks and like sodas and all this other stuff. But the point is, I was able to take all these items that I knew that people want on a daily basis. People will want sleeves on a daily basis. They'll want nice, you know, relatively nice sleeves. They'll want um, binders for their cards. They'll want accessories, so to speak. They'll want, you know, random cards that I picked out of the case that they might have not been willing to buy because they were a little overpriced. But because I used credit, I didn't really care and I was forced to burn it. I was able to sell those things and, and make a ton of cash back and, and even make some profit here or there, which was absolutely amazing. Um, Another thing about credit is uh, being able to actually just sell it to people. I mean, there's been times where I just enter people in tourneys and like, let's say it's a ten dollar tourney, and, and I would enter and I would let my friends pay me like six, seven dollars cash, and I would enter them with credit. Yeah, you're losing a little bit on credit, but you're getting cash back, which is much better, much more, uh, 
much more useful because you can use it anywhere. Um, and you were probably going to spend it on an item that was worth that much anyway in the first place. Um, maybe it was marked up a little bit by the store. Uh, but anyway, so, so playing in tournaments, building up credit, selling that stuff is just absolutely huge. Um, make, just making marginal profit, making it like little increments of profit every, every place you can um, from tournament winnings is huge. And then piling that up and being able to sell these little things. I mean, another thing I would do is like sleeves and stuff. I, I know in Europe, uh, it's kind of a pain in the butt sometimes to get PC sleeves or just sleeves in general. Um, so what I would do is I, I have friends, uh, you know, from Europe, Austria, Germany, um, the UK, all, all over. And what I would do is they would hit me up in advance and they'd be like, hey, I need, you know, like a small palette of, let's say, I don't know, 100 or 200 PC whites and like 50 pink sleeves or, you know, just all, all, all these different things. And they would li list these things out to me and I'd be like, okay, so give me like a week or two and then I'll, I'll get them to you before the event. So they would, they would pay me a little bit less for those sleeves, but it would be a little bit more than here because they're worth more. So I would burn all my credit and I would win a bunch of stuff and product and then I would just take that to events and I would sell it off there because I knew they wanted it and they were guaranteed buyers. I mean, they would fly back home and then they would be happy because they got it for a little bit less or average market value here. And then they would be selling it back home for their own profit, which is which is fantastic. I had no problems with that as long as we're both content. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much all. I mean, the last thing is obviously just buying and selling. Once you establish a solid collection and not just collection, but co co and when I say collection, I don't mean just like collection cards, like you know, CPTV stuff, all this nonsense. I mean like collection of cards that you're going to be using. You can build a nice collection too of collector's items and just nice binders and shit for buying and selling and trading. That's cool too, you can do that as well. But if you're really just trying to stay and play competitive, which has always been the goal of my channel and what I promote, I think people should always try and uh, take their game to that next level and always try to be competitive, is you should try and get the cards that you can use practically um, first before, all, uh, before everything else. Um, and then you can, you know, worry about all the collection nonsense and rarity nonsense and language nonsense and all that other stuff. So those are the things I think people should be worried about. Um, those are just my suggestions. So um, just to recap, be sure you're networking, you're, you're building stable relationships, especially online and with friends. Um, I know some people are able to do this through YouTube. I know I've been able to do this through YouTube and I'm very thankful for that. Um, another thing, like I said, is borrowing, being able to have friends in your area or just people across the state or even country or even worldwide. You can consistently rely on to get you cards if you need them last minute um, or just access the cards. Not just borrowing, but maybe just give you cards. I mean, I've had plenty of friends just give me cards and, you know, I've, I've returned the favor multiple times. And then lastly, just tournaments and then being able to establish yourself as a, I guess, a credit player. Like someone that, that constantly just is is rolling with dough, if that makes sense. Like you're constantly doing well in these tournaments, um, winning and winning and topping them and then building up, you know, lots of credit, lots of prizes, boxes. Um, no need to open your boxes, honestly. Just sell them off. Even if it's, even if you were to pull a card out of the set that it's that's, a, that's an amazing set and it's like a hundred dollar card, wh why risk not pulling it? It's an absolute gamble when it comes to packs and stuff. Um, that's definitely the worst way to to build up your collection and buying stuff on the primary market from stores in Konami. Um, it's not to discourage it. I mean, I'm sure people still like doing it and it's a fun experience. But if you're trying to be competitive, that's something I highly discourage. So. Um, remember, buying, selling is awesome. Trading is awesome. I kind of stay away from trading just because uh, it's very time-consuming and it's very uh, a lot of people are very flaky in this game and just in trading communities in general. Um, and they're very unreliable. People will always try to screw each other over. When in buying and selling, um, usually you can make both people uh, much happy, much easier just because it's money involved and a card involved. Um, it's not really card and card um, because there's a lot more, you know, there's a lot more variance there as far as values. But those are the things I think you guys should focus on. Uh, build up your collections, have a great time, I mean, borrow cards when you can, enter as many tournaments as you can, try to build up your skill while you're at it, I mean, practice as much as possible, use DN as a tool, that's probably what my next video is going to be about, um, uh, so yeah, that's pretty much all I can tell you guys that, that I could think of in this video without making it even longer than this, so that's pretty much it, check out my other videos, check out my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook fan page, all that stuff down in the description of this video, um, remember, play big or go home, and uh, yeah. Uh, peace out YouTube and uh, check out my other videos if you haven't, subscribe if you already haven't, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.